Hello and welcome back to another War Tales guide. My name is Saiken and this is the No Nonsense comprised version of the Class Gate uh, for Swordsmen. My guides are typically related to 10 minutes, very information dense guides, so you will find everything that you need to know about the Swordsmen and builds around it in this guide. I will start with uh, saying the Swordsman is a very able class that you can use either as a tank or as a damage dealer. There are, as with any class in the game, multiple ways of building uh, the Swordsman, but I will show you two in particular that might pique your interest. I have uh, prepared uh, this guide by essentially having six brand new recruits that I uh, started recruiting, got them to level 11, and we're now going bit by bit. Swordsman is going to be the first one uh, through the different builds. So as for the builds, I will introduce two builds for you today. One that is going to be a tank build and one that is going to be a DPS build. And we're going to see both of them in action. So as for the tank build, the Swordsman is potentially the second best tank in the game, in my opinion. And has an incredible um, potential as a duelist, as a tank. So first up, um, when it comes to tanks, you want to go with heavy armor. Uh, you can't see it now, but you will see it a little bit later. The actual armor and the guard make up for the majority of the tank. Armor overall is much more impactful than hit points uh, throughout the entire game. Guard is essentially a reduction of damage that uh, you are taking. So if you get up to 70 to 80 percent guard, which in the end game is a achievable uh, goal, you will only take 20% uh, damage in return. So it is possible to have an effective armor value of around three to 4,000 in, in the end game uh, with 200 hit points. So you can see uh, that is very important. As for the both uh, specs were, uh, that uh, have heavy armor, I strongly suggest you go with a fighter and we're going through the fighter build today. Fighter has a destabilizing strike, which allows the target to lose guard. And um, on top of it, it can be upgraded to crit. Um, I would highly recommend taking that. As for the level three uh, uh, feat, we want to get Valorous Duel because we will be engaging and re-engaging quite a bit. The role of a swordsman tank is to deal damage during the engagements with counterattacks and to create Velo and you will see that in the playtest whenever they are engaging they generate a Veiler. I would go for either Bulwark if you want to be a little bit more tanky which means every time they engage they have a damage reduction of 70% or if you feel more uh, say dualist-ish in style I would go for counterattack which gives you additional repost attacks. So we're having Destabilizing Strike into Valorous Duel into Bulwark. On level 8 we are going for Hardcore Training, which makes you immune to bleeding, poison and burning. The upgraded version of that also gives you Rage whenever you take some of uh, those um, attributes and you will, uh, Fury uh, rather, and you will have a stacking buff of damage. The level 10 talent is uh, very important for the build as we're going for defensive repass, which gives you a 50% chance once you're disengaging to automatically deal damage instead with an attack of opportunity. And really the play style is engage, disengage, engage, disengage, and not only dealing damage throughout uh, the time, but also having a 50% chance to do an attack of opportunity even further propelled by more uh, attacks of opportunity that you can pull off. As for the stats, you want to go 15 into willpower. You want to at least hit 16, maybe 18 movement. I personally like my tanks a little bit faster. And then you can either go with the typical meta build where you are increasing the critical hit chance. I personally also like constitution and a little bit of strength as a, uh, com uh, as a combination, just to even out uh, the stats. To, to be fair, after willpower and movement is upgraded, the rest is really a bonus. You will see the build is dealing a decent amount of damage in the end game and will be quite tanky. So that is build number one. Build number two that we're going to look at is an AOE melee damage dealer. And for that, we're using the Swordmaster again. Uh, the, so, uh, the Swordsman is the second best AOE tank, uh, AOE damage dealer, in my 
opinion, we, we would uh, focus in that case in dealing damage in the front line against a more than one target. Swordsmaster can only wear medium armor, as you can see here. Uh, laceration uh, will attack two times with a sword and your idea is to, uh, to deal as much damage as possible in a two meters area. The build is very similar with Laceration, this time instead of engaging uh, via a Valorous Duel, we're taking Valorous Chain as uh, the form of generating uh, uh, Valor. As a damage dealer, we are trying to be more or less uh, Valor neutral, maybe take a little bit Valor. The tanks and the supports are generating Valor, the dam damage dealers are taking Valor. So. Swordsmaster into Valorous uh, Chain will at least give you the option to regain some of the Valor that you're using. Then into Counter-Attack, uh, because you want to retaliate if you're engaged. You're not regularly engaging, but when you're engaging that is important to deal that amount of damage. Hardcore training is too good to pass it by. Not only because you're frequently going to uh, take uh, bleeding, poisoning or burning uh, as a status, but also that because it ups your damage. Goes very nicely together with torches and, and other abilities where essentially others are setting enemies adjacent to you on fire. You then take that and uh, further increase your damage. And again, defensive repost, uh, just in case you are in melee, there's not only a 50% chance that you're ignoring it, but a 50% uh, chance of uh, retaliating. In both of the builds, I would take Exord as the level 12 skill. It is by far across all six classes the best level 12 skill because not only increases critical hit, but also critical damage by 30% for the entirety of the group. It is unmatched, keep in mind, the bravery skills can only be used once per round. Typical fight takes maybe two to three rounds, so you never want to have way more than two or three of the bravery skills in your party. So without further ado, we're now going to uh, look a bit through the uh, equipment of uh, both of uh, these uh, builds and uh, we'll see them in game. All right, jumping into some gameplay for the Swordsman. We are engaged as a level 11 uh, Swordsman. I've used absolute basic gear, uh, gear that can be completely crafted, the Arcadian set, as well as a little bit of a crafted belt accessory. We are fighting against straight up level 14 enemies, uh, the highest enemies in the game. And I want to showcase how this tank is uh, working. I will for this purpose not use any uh, special skills of uh, the lieutenants or uh, the uh, captain itself. Just wanting to show uh, the pure build as such. So the swordsman, uh, specifically the duelist, is a tank buster build and we're going to see some gameplay footage. We are seeing that there is a tank right down here, uh, a perfect opportunity for us to engage. And we're going to see how well uh, the 56% uh, percent guard are actually going to go down. First up, we're opening with a destabilization strike uh, that always lands a critical hit against again enemies without guard. With guard, it removes it. So this guy is now uh, uh, so solely without guard. We're disengaging, uh, striking nicely with an attack of opportunity. Our fury oil procs as well. You can see that we do have a 25% chance to attack twice with attacks of opportunity and a 50% chance that, or respectively 100% chance that the Fury Oil will reduce our damage taken. These are just two oils. You can use whatever oil you, uh, you want um, on the character. We're going back in with um, Taunt, get, uh, getting that nice little Valor um, that pays for itself. Disengaging, this time we were not uh, successful. Uh, by doing that, we're going in yet again with a nice uh, critical hit and disengaging with another one. And you can see out of uh, 440 uh, guard, uh, this character alone has almost gotten them down. Mind you, this is a higher level uh, enemy and we're not primarily a damage dealer, but we are ready to deal even more damage going forward. We're getting ourselves some deflection. We have not used any Valor whatsoever, and we're positioning ourselves strategically so that these guys here uh, will take the tank as uh, the prime target, engage, and give us more Valor. 
that's really the gameplay footage of uh, the tank. All right, we are joining the other swordsman build. This time we're playing as the sword master, which is the two-hand uh, build version that I mentioned, the laceration build. And the combat situation that I wanted to showcase with you today is one where uh, the left side flank is slowly but surely crumbling. What's on the right hand side, we still have a little bit more time. We can see we need to pull our tank over here and the swordsman can be just the little bit of extra breathing room that we need in order to hold that flank. Now, Laceration has a specific uh, prerequisite. You need to attack first at least once when, once it's upgraded before you can then unleash the Laceration. We're down to one Valor point, but thankfully if uh, we uh, right-click the Treacherous Setback, which is the normal attack, we can maneuver exactly where we need to in order to hit all three. That in return triggers a valor, valor point. And then you can see just how much extra damage we're dealing. Mind you, these are tanks, right? So we're almost 30% uh, through both of them. Highly overleveled tanks. But the Phalanx, which is the one that is dealing more damage to us, that guy is heavily, heavily um, punished so far and uh, is already without any guard. We're protecting our ranger and we can take still a few more hits. The swordsman nonetheless is a frontliner and although it is overall net negative on Vela points, it can still be quite an impactful uh, frontliner. Of course, if they would be clustered up uh, better and you would have, for instance, a weaker front line like these two-handed uh, characters, uh, the Laceration would have likely gotten through all of them. As a comparison, uh, this uh, um, uh, soldier here had 224 armor. That's exactly what these guys are having. So we would have uh, gotten all three of them down with uh, the single hit and Laceration. Like I mentioned, a little bit weaker than the uh, Executioner build, but nonetheless, if you regularly hit with it, you can actually pull off some crazy moves. So I hope uh, that you enjoyed that. If you are a big fan of Warriors, then leave a comment down below and let me know how you built your Warriors. And on top of that, um, try slicing the like button into Bye-bye and have a good one.